everybody's making SUVs and everybody's buying SUVs. But are they really SUVs? When you think of it, what is the traditional format for an SUV? A ladder frame chassis, rear wheel drive, 4x4. And when was the last time you had an SUV following that template? If memory serves me right, it was a Thar and that was a couple of years ago. And now we have this, the all new Scorpio. It retains the ladder frame chassis. It retains rear wheel drive. It has the option of 4x4 with proper low ratio. It has the engine in the traditional north-south orientation. Mahindra, they are calling this the big daddy of SUVs and they're focusing on authenticity and on credibility. But crucially, what we are here to find out is have Mahindra banished the sins of the past? Because if you remember, the reason why manufacturers moved away from body-on-frame construction was that it wasn't great in terms of dynamics, wasn't great in terms of NVH. Have those problems been addressed and can this really appeal to modern SUV buyers? That's what we're going to find out in this review. But before we go ahead, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with like-minded enthusiasts, subscribe to the Evo India channel and stick around because towards the end, we are going to be going proper off-roading with the 4x4 variant of the Scorpio. Feeling better than I ever been. Cairo in his bag, this beat is heaven sin. Back up in my element, new whip, trunk up in the front, I whip an elephant. It's all limo tint, that's how you move when you the president. You on the styling front, I like the fact that Mahindra have retained the traditional Scorpio styling elements. So this looks like a Scorpio, but this also looks like a thoroughly modern Scorpio. So it retains that bluff nose, but it is even more imposing than the Scorpio in the past. Obviously, the new Mahindra Twin Peaks logo, which is flanked by this chrome vertical slats, the inverted trapezoidal air dam, the double barrel headlamps, these are LED lamps, LED DRLs, LED DRLs down there, LED turn signal indicators. It is an imposing machine. But what you will notice is that the scoop on the bonnet, that is not there. And Pratap was said that it, this has to be credible. This has to be authentic. And if that air scoop does not serve any purpose, there's no point having it there. And that's why they have removed it. Now, over in profile, you get either 17s or 18 inch. These are 18 inch alloys out here. And I am five foot nine inches tall. And the Scorpio is taller than me. This is massive. This is no shrinking violet. The wheelbase, 2,540 mm. It's got proper three row seating with captain seats at the back or a regular bench seat. And over at the rear, well, the tail lamp graphic, this will look kind of familiar. It looks very Scandinavian and honestly, it also looks very cool. If you remember, the Scorpio right from the beginning always had a tall vertical tail lamp. So that's another element that has been retained. But it's not a cliff face rear end. It's got a nice curvature, which is nice. And like with Scorpios in the past, the tailgate, it opens towards the side. It's not a top hinged tailgate. Overall, I think the styling works really well. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. So what's the benefit of having a tall, wide, long SUV? This is it. You walk into the SUV. You don't have to crouch in. You don't have to clamber in. It is easy. And in case you find a slight issue, you have these grab handles on the A-pillar. Now, if you recall, this is something that we criticized on the Thar, that it should have had grab handles on the A-pillar so that you can actually climb into it. The Scorpio, it has it. It has it on both sides for the passenger as well. And that makes ingress and egress really easy. It also has a footboard. So you put your foot on that and then climb in. So access is very convenient. Now, in terms of the driving position, this feels familiarly like an Scorpio. If you remember in the past also, the Scorpio had the shallow dash and that is retained out here. And the visibility is fantastic. Even though I like my seat to be nice and low, still the view out front, superb and you have this sort of power bulge on the bonnet it gives you that impression of really strong muscle and strong power out there shutting the door it has a solid nice door shut and you can rest your arm on the door so again it gives you that king of the world driving feel it's got a traditional mechanical handbrake, not an electronic parking brake even though this has disc brakes at the rear it's not drums at the rear the display now, the dials are traditional analog dials, but 
Praco and the Speedo. And in the middle of that, you have a TFT screen, which can also show you your navigation map. So this is actually a very convenient layout. And I think it also looks very nice. We have a touchscreen infotainment with wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You have inbuilt navigation. You have a whole slew of connected apps, a lot of inbuilt apps also out here. You can start this remotely, start cooling this remotely, all of that jazz you can do with it. The sunroof, this is not a panoramic sunroof. There was no engineering challenge to putting a panoramic sunroof, but they wanted to differentiate the Scorpio from the XUV700. So it has a regular size sunroof, but they also say this is the widest in its class. The Sony sound system on the top end variant, this is taken straight out of the XUV700. It's got a 12 speaker system, and I can tell you, this sounds really good. This is a banging sound system. Plus the refinement is fantastic. The version we are testing right now is the petrol and at idle, you cannot hear anything. When you floor it, there's a slight murmur from the engine, but that's it. The refinement, I'm telling you, it is stunning. The seats, these are leatherette seats and this I don't like because leatherette, it doesn't feel like leather and fabric suits Indian conditions much better. These are not cool seats either, though it does have perforations, but after a while, leatherette, somehow I prefer fabric. But you can get fabric on the lower end variants. You also get this chocolate colored insert on the dash. So in terms of the overall styling, I think it does look very good. You get a wireless charger. So along with the wireless CarPlay, you don't need to use cables at all. It has USB A ports out here and a USB C port at the back. You get cup holders here. And on the variants with the 4x4, you have the terrain mode button out here that we'll talk about when we jump into the 4x4 variant. So that's the front seat. The steering wheel, this has been taken out of the XUV700. It's got a slight flat bottom going on out here, cruise control and the volume buttons are on the steering wheel, but you don't have paddle shifters. This is the same six speed automatic gearbox, but no paddle shifters. So if you want to shift, you put it into manual mode and then shift manually. And yep, so this is the interiors of the new Scorpio. Similar to the front, you climb into the rear seat, so access is very easy. In terms of space, the driver's seat is adjusted to my driving position and I still have two and a half, three inches of free knee room. You sit nice and high, so you have a good view out front. It's got this theater seating kind of thing going on. You can recline the seat, so you can adjust it, make it a little more comfortable. It has got a center armrest. You can also get captain seats over here and I think that is a really good move. It gives you that sort of king of the world position even while sitting at the back. You get a good amount of headroom. This is adequate. The width is also good so you can sit three abreast. The transmission tunnel is not very big so it doesn't intrude too much into the space out here. You have blower controls for the middle row and you have a USB-C charger so you can charge in your phones. And of course, we have to jump into the third row. And now getting into the third row. So you have this one touch lever that folds and tumbles the middle row out of the way. You can use the footboard to get into the back and it's actually not difficult. And then you pull the seat down and let's see the space. Oh, all right, okay the bees come back and the space out here, it's, it's tight. For a fully grown adult, this is very tight. You have your knees up in the air and for kids, it's okay. But for a fully grown adult, this is pretty cramped. You have a little slot to put, I don't know what you're going to put over there, maybe coins, but that's about it. You don't have vents for the air conditioning at the back. You have a 12 volt socket out here but you don't have USB chargers, so you can't charge in your phones either. So your kids, if they're sitting out here and they run out of juice on their devices, they're gonna be howling. The, actually the window is pretty wide, so you won't feel claustrophobic in here. You also have a light out there and you have more speakers, so you will get the full effect of the Sony sound system. But for fully grown adults, this is a tight place. The Scorpio and I, we go back 20 years. Back then, I was just a cub reporter. 
the launch i think it happened in nasik and i was in nasik to cover a rally and then adil told me to bring down our very first test car the scorpio bring it down from nasik to pune and i drove it down so i have a lot of experience of that very first scorpio and all the subsequent generations of course those initial scorpios they had a lot of issues but mahindra they persisted they really chipped away at the scorpio and they made it into something that was really admirable the second generation scorpio that was my long term test car when i got married and i spent a month on holiday in rajasthan with my wife with the scorpio and we loved it absolutely loved it the scorpio it did not do many things well but the things that it did well it did really really well let's start with the driving position this sort of commanding driving position this you get in range rovers you don't get this in affordable suvs this is a king of the world driving position so commanding the visibility out is brilliant and velu sami the president of engineering at mahindra he says that this visibility is 6% better than the d segment suv benchmark and honestly i can't think of anything at this affordable price point that gives you this kind of a driving position and it's allied to all these small little touches for instance my right elbow i can rest it on the door pad while i'm driving my left elbow on this center console the armrest and you have this really comfortable driving position this driving position you can drive for 20 hours and it won't tire you out and of course driving for 20 hours you need proper ride proper handling and i'm amazed by how they've sorted this out but before we get to that let's talk about the refinement this is the petrol engine now a petrol scorpio is not a new thing it's a very very rare thing but mahindra back in the day they had a petrol engine i think it was a reno petrol engine in the scorpio this new petrol engine is the same as the xuv700 also the same as a thought but it's running the same tune as the xuv700 200 bhp and the first thing that strikes you is the silence the scorpio it was never known to be a silent suv here it is pin drop silence you can't hear anything i'm doing 50 km per hour on this broken patch of road at around 2000 rpm there's a faint murmur from the engine to know that it is running but the silence in here the calm that sense of calm unbelievable this is not something that you normally associate with a scorpio and it's the same with the diesel we'll drive the diesel later on but the diesel also is silent you can't feel a little bit of vibration through the pedals and through the floorboards through the underbody i guess that's because of the body on frame construction but overall refinement is brilliant then you have this electric power steering the earliest scorpio was hydraulic power steering and even though it had power steering you still had to use a bit of muscle to steer the scorpio this is fing one finger finger twirling light there's absolutely no effort required It's like with one finger you can turn this now this is not the way to drive a car but i'm just demonstrating just how easy it is to pilot the scorpio now that said i think the steering weight is a little too light is the same criticism that we have leveled at the xuv700 that it gets a little too light the scorpio also the steering is too light the diesel it gets the drive mode so it has that zip zap zoom modes and over there the steering weight does increase the petrol however does not have those drive modes so the steering it remains very very light this i think should have been a little bit heavier but honestly it makes this massive suv so easy to drive in the city so easy to drive in congested traffic conditions and i've always maintained the fastest thing on the road the absolute fastest thing on the road when you're driving in the city is a white scorpio with a flag stuck on the center console everybody gives way the roads the traffic it just parts way for a white scorpio this will be the same with this a new scorpio in white people will give way and to top it up it's just easy to drive now things that the scorpio did not do well back in the day the ride comfort it dealt with bad roads well because it was rugged but you felt it you felt every bit of it 
But here, I'm driving over these broken patches and the way it is soaking things up. I know I've used the word amazing far too many times, but honestly, it's amazing. For a body on frame construction, this is amazing. Even by monocoque standards, you would call this good. So were this to be compared against monocoque SUVs, you would still term this ride quality as good. Of course, it's with a caveat that over some of the bumps, you can't feel it moving around, that sort of lateral movement, which is typical of body on frame constructions of ladder frame chassis. So you do feel at times that this is a ladder frame, but I'm telling you 99% of the time, this ride comfort is phenomenal. Did I say it's astonishing? Well, it is astonishing. And pouring down with rain, as you can see, visibility is down to next to nothing. But because of this driving position, there's just so much of confidence. You have such a better view of the road up ahead. The Scorpio, it always had this unshakable aura around it that nothing can stop it. With the new Scorpio, it's just taken up two, three, four notches. The improvements, you can't call this one generation up. This is like two generations up on the old Scorpio while retaining that essence, that characteristics of the Scorpio. Before we dive into the dynamics, let's have a short classroom session. So at the launch of the Scorpio, Velu Sami, who is Mahindra's senior vice president and also the boss of all the engineering, the global product development head, he talked about the tech and the engineering that has gone into the new frame and the new body. It is hell of a lot. So I'm actually going to read out from the notes that I've made. Now, he stresses that the center of gravity is not all that important. It is important, but it's not the be all and end all. What is even more important is the roll arm height. So what is the roll arm height. Say you draw an imaginary line from the front suspension roll center to the rear suspension roll center. That is your roll arm height. And that on the new Scorpio is at 463 mm, which compares very well with the D-segment SUV benchmark, which is at 505 mm. And I'm guessing the D-segment SUV benchmark is the Endeavor because in our opinion and in all our tests, the Endeavor actually handles better than the Fortuner. Just for reference, the center of gravity of the new Scorpio is at 706 mm. Now, they've reduced the weight of the body to 293 kilos, that is 13% down. The weight of the chassis, that is down by 10% to 213 kilos. And that has aided the static stability factor, which is now 1.119, which actually compares very favorably. In fact, it is better than the D-segment SUV benchmark, which is at 1.105. Now, the body in white, torsional rigidity has gone up by 8.7%. The body in white, bending stiffness has become better by 52.1%. The frame torsional rigidity, it has bettered the existing benchmark by 6.5%. The frame bending stiffness has improved on the benchmark by 9.7%. And 41% high strength steel is used in the body in white and 81% in the frame, which is again claimed to be the best in class. Then there is the suspension, the front double wishbone suspension that has 225 mm of front suspension travel and 541 mm, that is the length of the front suspension knuckle. And also they claim to have reduced the unsprung masses by 35%. Over at the rear, the pentalink suspension that has a watts linkage and that claims to retain the axle center line during cornering and thus reduce the lateral movement and also the flex. You get the frequency dependent dampers. You also get multi-tune valves with concentric land in the dampers, which is claimed to maintain the damping force even when the suspension piston velocity increases. That is a lot. How does it deliver on the road? Let's get back on the road to find out. The traditional Scorpio buyer base, they will love the improvements to the Scorpio. And that audience that always stayed away from the Scorpio because of all the compromises that that body and frame chassis had, they will also love it because there aren't any compromises to talk of. For instance, a buyer who would normally look at a mid-size SUV, they will definitely look at the Scorpio and there is nothing not to like. It's not cumbersome to drive. The ride is not bouncy and jiggly. Scorpio and corners. These were not two words that you would use in the same sentence. But now you can. You can go down windy roads and you enjoy the drive. 
I have to be clear, this does not handle like an XUV700. This is higher, heavier, taller, all of that is there. But on its own, in its own right, this actually is a really nice car to drive. As you can see, it is pouring away. There is water on the road, it is slippery. But there is no fear, it's just such a joy to drive. In fact, in such conditions, the Scorpio really comes into its own. Because with other, those mid-size SUVs, you would take it easy, you would see water, you don't know if there's a pothole underneath it. With the Scorpio, you don't care, you just go through everything, it takes it all in its stride. And then round corners, it goes surprisingly well. There is good bite, this is running on 18-inch wheels. The manual strangely gets only 17-inch wheels, but this gets 18-inch wheels, the automatic. And it feels safe and secure. It just feels nice. Now, I've always had a soft corner for SUVs. I love that commanding driving position. The fact that you can just go anywhere, nothing really stops you. And the Scorpio, it just appeals to me. It appeals to me so hard. I love it. The obvious question to ask would be XUV700 or the Scorpio. Now, both catered to two different segments for sure. The XUV is easier to drive and it handles better and it is faster. The 700 does a true 200 kilometers per hour. The Scorpio, it is a body on frame SUV that does 180 kilometers per hour. Not that much in it. And the power, 200 bhp. You put your foot down and it does get a move on. It's not like XUV700 fast where you do feel the speed but here you don't feel it is inadequate. You feel like this speed is good, it's enough. You're happy with it. You can stay comfortably ahead of all kinds of traffic. This six-speed automatic gearbox, it is not the fastest shifting gearbox in the world but for this vehicle, for the character of this new Scorpio, it's it's fine. And round corners, it's a wet corner. And the ESP obviously has cut in over there. And it does get ESP. ESP, six airbags, a lot of work has gone into crash safety in terms of the body engineering and the frame engineering. The Thar already is a four-star global end cap rated SUV and the Scorpio definitely it should do better in those crash safety ratings but let us see let us go for the crash safety rating and then we'll see now I am an automotive critic and I have to find things to criticize so let's point out a few things one leatherette seats I don't like it I would prefer fabric seats two the steering too light it should be a little heavier three the brakes are very sharp so after a while you get used to it and then it's not an issue but the first time you drive into the Scorpio you will nod your head because you will brake too hard because these brakes are too sharp and fourth well I, I don't know what else to criticize normally when you sit so high up there is a lot of body roll but here the body roll is kept well in check and it's just that sense of confidence that you get. Even enthusiastic drivers will enjoy driving the Scorpio. And I say this as a hardcore enthusiast. Last evening I was talking to the Mahindra guys and I told them that there is a serious danger that a lot of Thar buyers will actually cancel their Thar bookings and buy a Scorpio. Because this has four-wheel drive, so you can option it with four-wheel drive. There is more practicality. A lot of XUV700 buyers will probably cancel their bookings and buy a Scorpio. Because it does almost everything that the 700 does. But it's got proper 4x4. It's got this proper ladder frame chassis. It is more rugged and more solid compared to the 700. You can give it a pounding, a solid beating and nothing will happen to a Scorpio. What will happen? Nothing. Impossible. 
I'm not one to get carried away. Okay, I am one to get carried away. What am I saying? But even when I put my sensible road tester hat on, what Mahindra have done with the Scorpio, I doff my hat. It's excellent what they've created. This is something I would buy, and that is not something that I would have said for any generation of the Scorpio in the past. As something to do long road trips in, to live with in the city, it's brilliant, brilliant. At the launch, they compared it with all kinds of vehicles: the Fortuner, the Innova, the Safari, the Seltos, and their confidence is not misplaced because it's there that this thing. it can take on all of those other suvs proper suvs and so called suvs and did you notice the refinement you can't hear the suspension going khadkod khadkod over any of the bumps the rear it is not giving you those sharp jolts that the scorpio used to do in the past you know jumping around like a bronco the steering is not kicking back it's filtering out all the nonsense over a speed breaker yeah i'm not bouncing around what more do you want okay i found another thing to criticize the fuel efficiency you will get 7 8 kmpl in the petrol but then come on this is a big suv what more do you expect a big automatic suv yeah i'm all in brody on the line i'm tapping in got out here pulling the strings for me a girl on the line she feeling me preoccupied by the motivation put in the time for the entry fee bro on the rise he kind of nice inside of my mind what really is me lately and now what we were looking forward to the entire day off roading the scorpio i've actually swapped into the diesel it's only the diesel right now that gets 4x4 the petrol does not get 4x4 So this is the diesel automatic and it's got this terrain mode button out here. It's got four low, but all the sections here at the adventure park, they don't need four low with the Scorpio. So I've kept it in four high and I'm in the mud and ruts mode and they say that's all that's required for the Scorpio in this kind of terrain and this has become very slippery and mucky with the rains. it's running on regular road tires so these aren't mud tires and honestly the thing that's really surprising me is on the rutted sections the suspension it absorbs the bumps so well it doesn't throw you around doesn't shake you up which is astonishing of course this kind of test other 4x4s can also go through but the ease with which the scorpio is doing it That's the thing that's really surprising me and especially over the ditches even if you go a little faster it's not throwing you around it's not jolting you So I haven't spoken about the suspension yet and I will right now because I left it for now when we're doing this difficult section so the front has got double wishbones and the rear has got what's called a penta link suspension Penta link is five links and the fifth link is a watts linkage and basically what that does is it prevents unnecessary motion on the rear axle so that when you step on it you get instant responses without any lag and without any flex in the drive train the dampers now these are FDD dampers frequency dependent damping it's similar to the FSDs frequency selective damping and what that does is depending on the undulations so the severity of the undulations so if it's really severe the dampers become softer if it's not that severe the dampers become stiffer so that gives you a planted and stable ride otherwise what happens is it becomes too soft and becomes too soggy and the car is all over the place that does not happen so depending on how bad the bumps are the dampers it adjusts its damping so now this is one of the more severe sections where you have to have a spotter to take you through and i'm sticking it in four high itself 
So it just gives you an idea of how capable the Scorpio is. The earlier sections weren't that difficult, to be honest. But this is now becoming difficult with the rain, with the muck and the slush. And from the inside, this actually looks more serious than probably on the outside. Mahindra also have their in-house adventure wing. And these guys know what they're doing in terms of difficult obstacles, challenges, things to really put these 4x4s to the absolute test and get us to experience what these SUVs are capable of. In fact, they're also involved in the development of these SUVs to make it absolutely crazy on this kind of terrain. And this really is one of the joys of driving a 4x4, is it not? You can have an easy time out on the highway and then when you find these obstacles on the weekend, just come and have a whole load of fun. And finally, the axle articulation tests. These axle twisters aren't anything new. We've done a lot of these with a lot of 4x4s. But this that they've done here, it's on natural terrain and it's rather hardcore. Oh. For these things, you need to be a little brave to do all this. And without a spotter, a spotter who knows what he's doing, there's no way in hell that I'll even try and attempt all this. So now it's on the right and will now dip to the left. So what does it say about the abilities of the Scorpio? The torsional rigidity that they spoke about. They were not joking. <laughs> this is a stiff chassis. The bending stiffness is strong. And all of this just shows the potential and capability of the new Scorpio. Oof, I love it, I love it. Man, doff my hat again to the engineers behind this to create something like this. <laughs> and at this price, of course there are other SUVs that do all this, but at this price, to be able to do all this with the comfort on the road, the handling on the road, the refinement and all the serious ability. <laughs> all right. We always qualify our verdicts with the pricing, but for a change, we know the price of a brand new car. In the case of the Scorpio, the Z8L, the top end, it comes in at under 20 lakh rupees, 19.49. Okay, that is for the manual, it's not for the automatic, nor is it for the 4x4, but add another lakh for 4x4, another lakh for the automatic, and still, the Scorpio comes across as excellent value for money. To summarize, great ride, not just for a body and frame, but even for a monocoque. Good handling, excellent visibility, a commanding driving position, lots of space inside, lots of features. It also looks good. And of course, it can do all of this. Very few SUVs. And at this price, nothing really can do all of this. Nothing really gives you this kind of package. Honestly, I'm in love with the Scorpio. And this is not just me saying this over, no, just the off-roading. This really has done everything it does everything it is the best of all worlds the last time i had so much fun was when we drove the thar and with the scorpio i think another long waiting period is going to follow i found another thing to criticize the apple carplay is still not working when we drove the xuv 7 last year the apple carplay wasn't yet activated and here on the scorpio also the apple carplay is not working so there I am looking out for things to criticize. I am. And that's a bee inside the car. Oh my god. Hey Justin, you take it out, man. Hey, listen.
listen boys this was all on the camera okay right now I mean boss, how can you do this on a public channel? Uh, I don't know why I'm 